I'm sure one of the most gratifying things about decorating a Christmas tree is the moments or are the moments when a child sits and looks at it and you wonder what kind of magic is happening at that moment. Is it about the lights? Is it about the ornaments? Is it about the multiple colors? Is it about the wishes perhaps for Christmas? And you know what I always thought about with the wishes? I think many children ask for things for Christmas that give us adults a hint of perhaps what they want to become when they grow up. You know, I think uh, a little girl who plays with horses probably wants to work with animals. A little boy who plays with trucks, and, I, and I'm not trying to uh, generalize here, but maybe he wants to work with trucks when he gets older or drive a truck or, or sell trucks when I was younger. The gifts that I wanted were all in the creative realm. I wanted art things. I wanted music things, you know. I mean, I loved animals also. And um, so anyway, Robin decorated our tree and it looks beautiful. And her grandson came by with her son and daughter-in-law and I snapped a photo of her grandson looking at the tree. And I didn't really do it with the intent of it being a reference photo. And this isn't really a painting of that photo, but it is, it does use the photo of him, of her grandson. And then I painted the tree, I kind of made it up um, just wanted some darks and lights using art, art experience, I guess you would say. Anyway, there, I need to put myself in the picture. That's what somebody told me. I'm cutting my face off. <laughs> I don't know that I'm claiming to be any great videographer. This was fun. This took about an hour though. So if you want to see how I did it, hang in there because the video is coming up right now. Okay, good morning. Let's do a Christmas tree. Indoor Christmas tree. An indoor lit Christmas tree. Maybe being admired by a child. I just want to put the golden light that I will touch up as I go along. I'm going to make sure I leave room for the, the star of the Christmas tree right at the top there. Keep that light. And we're just going to just kind of rough it out here. Some of this is going to be darker later on. I just want this Christmas tree kind of real easy to see it. I'm going to make it go down to here, and then around, and I want a child here somewhere, okay. So the back of the card is basically just my, ref uh, not my reference, my, um, my palette. I have a little child sitting here looking at the tree in awe of the tree. So there's the tree. There we go. Now we kind of have a defined outline there, I think. Yeah, I don't know if you can 
see it or not. It's not, not really dark yet, but that's kind of the idea is to keep it very light right now. So we want that light to be behind the tree. And that side of the tree will be dark. And this side of the tree will be light. So the wall's light, the tree's dark. The wall's dark, the tree's light. See how that's going to work? Just kind of spread it around. And the child is right here. Just sitting down, looking at the tree. If you can imagine that. The reference photo I'm using is Robin's grandson. And he was actually sitting looking at our Christmas tree. Um, but the tree itself is not ours. I'm, I'm just kind of making up the tree. I just keep it like that, I guess. Right now, we probably would be a good idea to... Hmm, what should I do next? I think the idea would be to put a bunch of dark green or blue or blue-green into the uh, the tree itself. So I'll go ahead and use blue and green and mix them together. Make kind of a dark hue of blue and green, maybe a little bit more green than blue. And what I want to do is I want to Make sure that's dry over there. I'm going to take this side of the tree. I'm going to leave a lot of spaces for ornaments. So I'm really kind of just drawing circles and then I'll fill in the circles. So this is going to be all these ornaments and lights and everything else that is just brightening the tree and reflecting light. and generating light also. I think everything will be over. Just little by little. Keep that top area bright for the for the um the star at the top of the tree. Let's see, even though these are green circles, some of the ornaments, probably all the ornaments are going to be red or blue. But I'm just kind of making room. There's going to be the boy. So I'll keep these ornaments here. see I'm just making circles really all I'm doing right now all right let's take this dark green and dark blue and fill in a lot of these areas here now now we're going to bring the wall is going to kind of dabbing it in because I want to. Well, that's kind of my style anyway. I just want to some branches coming out here. So it looks more like a tree. Uh, 
and more green, more blue. Just kind of keep filling it in here. here on this part of the tree I think is going to be in the shadow because this is the shaded the shaded part of the tree I just keep adding little little areas of darkness See how it's coming together a little bit. Let's hope it stays looking like it's coming together as I add more. I'm adding more and more of these little round areas for the Christmas ornaments. I'm gonna try my best to keep everything. If I if I need to use gouache, I will after I'm done with this. Yesterday, Robin's grandson was here with her son and daughter-in-law. <coughs> they were visiting from New Jersey. And Robin couldn't wait. She couldn't wait to show her grandson the Christmas tree. It was truly a highlight for her. You know, the magic of the way it looks. And he truly was memorized. I mean, he sat in front of that tree for a while. Just looking at it, you know. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that really wonderful? The only thing that's more wonderful is is Robin's the wonder in Robin's eyes, you know, watching him. The only thing more wonderful. Grandma's eyes. Here we go. It's coming together. Maybe the more ornaments that I need. I, think I can always undo them. I can't. I guess I could redo them. But I can't undo them. I guess I can. I can paint over them. What am I saying? <coughs> now let's put this down here. Oh, this, this Christmas tree. Yeah, so this is not an outdoor tree, so there's no snow on it. Although I know some people do put snow on their trees. Now we want to start adding yellow to this mix. And get this a little bit lighter in green. Just a little bit on this side of the tree. A little bit of yellow. Keep that yellow going on there. 
I think that'll work. See how that yellow is working nice? Now I gotta remember, right there, I need to try to outline him a little bit more. And we get some more yellow. Make it very yellow. Right here. green some of the yellow a little bit further into the tree, a little bit further in. And then over here is kind of a mixture of the two. we have our tree <laughs> we don't have we don't have anything on it we don't have any ornaments on it but there's our tree I see I spilled a drop right here let me pry that up a little bit all right now you gotta kind of let it dry 
it's almost dry already in the, in the right spots but I want this part to be light and then this part to be darker so but the light coming from this side here so let me go ahead and put some color on the child's face is it dry there? Okay, I think I can do this. Of course, it's got this glow. some blow for the for the shirt I think Just gotta make sure that green is dry next to it Little by little, it's coming together, right? Little by little. the hair here we go let me get some dark blue for the for the pants
dark blue for the bottom of his shoe. Let's see. in awe of the tree.
Okay, now some shadows under the tree. this over here so that light from that star is very bright and some lightness to it. Let's go ahead and add some browns to it. Just to kind of accentuate a little bit. So an old Rembrandt trick, by the way, is to put some dark with dark so that everything is in contrast. So, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Rembrandt, for giving me an idea. where this light is coming from but we don't know where it is those oranges with those browns. And the idea is to, uh, let's use a bigger brush here. The idea is to um, make this part look very light. So we're going to take this orange and this brown. I'm going to spread them together.
go. Let's take a little brush. Try to get the boy's skin tone a little darker on the side of the face with the shadows. Just a little bit. Very subtle. So he's got a glow on the front of his face. some of the reds for the, for the Christmas ornaments. And we'll remember to keep them shiny. So let's put them make them red and shiny with reflective areas on them all. Some of these areas that I left for the Christmas balls can simply be the white of the reflection, which I didn't really plan that way, but I made them so small it's kind of necessary to do it that way. Like that one right there. Let's get all these Christmas ornaments looking very reflective. with time. said you gotta be quick. Rob and I have been watching this baking show, this baking competition, and these people who are very, very talented at baking are being challenged to compete against one another for a $50,000 prize. Now, they only have a certain amount of time to make these things, and if one of them makes a mistake, it ruins the whole thing, and then they're kicked off. And I said to Robin that baking is an art. Why do they make any artist subjected to a time limit? It's, it's never a race. Art is never a race. Cooking or 
painting if it's art it's not a race even even some of the classic artists were hired by you know royalty and they were always under the gun to get things done right away get it done today when I do illustrations for children's books the um, publisher often will say you know they give me a timeline but I'm really good at meeting that deadline but it's not real tight ever it's never a very very tight schedule for me it's always lots of wiggle room and there's been a couple times, you know, where, like, Robin or I had to go to the doctor or whatever, and, you know, things take time, or we had to do family things, and then I would have to put the, the art away for, like, a day, and that takes a lot of time away from um, the project. And... It's always a challenge, but so far I've always met the challenge. Like with the the church, if you were following that, I didn't. I set that one on myself that I I wanted to get two hundred cards done by the time of the auction. But that was a self-imposed challenge. I didn't have anybody telling me to do that. But quite often the publisher will tell me um, we need it by such and such a date. But like I say, the publisher we work with is, oh, sorry, that was my, my belly telling me something. <laughs> but um, the publisher we work with is always very generous about the amount of time and always very fair. I don't know if you know this or not, but when I work with the publisher, um, the publisher also works with the author. Now, I, so I, okay, just to clear, clarify, Robin and I do books that we write ourselves. Sometimes Robin writes them, so other times I write them, and she adds to them. Sometimes she writes them all by herself, but I always illustrate them. But there's no deadline for us except for a self-imposed deadline. Well, with the exception of, let's say it's a Christmas book, um, which we are working on one for next year, by the way. But if, if it's a Christmas book, then of course you have a deadline. Usually the deadline for Christmas books is like August. I know that sounds weird, but that's usually what it is. Anyway, so uh, where was I going with this? I don't, th I don't think art should have deadlines, but in the world of publishing, it's always a deadline. Sometimes a deadline helps you a little bit, I think. It kind of forces you to get done. With these, the Papa Paints cards like I've been doing, I do look at the clock. I try to keep them under an hour, but I don't worry about it. If it's over an hour, then it's over an hour. And I've got quite a few that took me longer than an hour to do. This one so far has taken 43 minutes. If, if my little timer is correct. I'm giving this all red ornaments. It just, I don't know, I just wanted to do that. There, all these red ornaments. A few more. And then I can always do something with that up there. to do. Alright, I think I'm going to use some gouache here. Yeah. Maybe I'll use some uh, burnt sienna. I'm going to use some burnt sienna. Maybe make the wall a little bit darker in the background. And I will also use some yellow, lemon yellow. 
and I will also use some white. Let's just see if I can maybe make a little bit more of a dramatic look here. I'm happy with the boy. I think I'm happy with that, the way he looks. But I feel like I could um, This one might work. This brush might work right there. It looks like about the right size. So what I think I want to do first is I want to take some of this. What is this called again? Burnt Sienna. Maybe make some of this wall a little bit darker. And kind of make it less, less uniform. Maybe back here too. emergency vehicle already this time of the morning these branches to be light looking so in order to achieve that I have to make the background dark I can actually add it a little bit darker I'm doing it in a pixelated or not pixelated a pointillism way just to keep it a little interesting i think Let me make sure i don't mess up him somewhere.
let's go ahead and add some of that white now. Just a little bit, I think, to here. This white and this yellow together. of yellow here I think the lights just hitting it right and up here too yellow here and there where the light is wrapping around the tree and hitting it. I'll take some of this purple. Hope I'm not making a mistake here. I'll mix it with some of that white. I'm trying to fix this shirt. I'm not so sure happy with those yellow areas. So I'm going to make them light purple instead.
All right, now let's spread out the color on the back of the card. It's a big mess, right? It's a big mess. It's always a big mess, though. It's nothing new. Nothing new about this. Just call me Messy Papa. Papa is a messy old man. <laughs> there we go. Spread it around. Alright, now I'm just gonna let that dry. I'm gonna turn off the camera just for a second. And I'm gonna use my hair dryer. It's not really a hair dryer. It's um this a pro heater but it's not really designed to dry cards so you got to be careful if you have one of these because it gets very hot but i'm going to turn it off while i do this so you don't got to listen to the noise okay let's see i'm going to fold it and see if i like it and if not then i'll keep working on it i think sometimes when i fold it i get a better idea of how it looks I think I like it. What do you think? I think I like it. It looks like a little boy admiring a Christmas tree. Just thinking about when Santa Claus comes. Right? Alright, I think I'm going to call it done. Well, thank you for watching the video. And thank you for your kind comments. And I will... Talk to you tomorrow. Thank you for everything. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.